All right, so I have gotten a variety of questions about the activity series or, well, more to the point, things about, hey, how do I do this problem on last year's exam? Either way, let's talk about this thing. So yes, this is me holding my, cam my, my phone in my hand, so it's a little shaky, but you'll notice at the top of this chart, which is on the back page of the 2016 exam, also table 9.6 in your textbook, uh, so artfully photocopied by us. So at the top, you have lithium, which we have seen before. It's on your periodic table. And as we look at a periodic table, you can see lithium hanging out in group 1A in the alkali metals. Now, what we know about the alkali metals is they are desperate to give up one of their electrons. So as we turn back and say, so there's my lithium there, and here's my lithium here, we should know that lithium would really rather be an ion. So as we look at this, lithium would rather be an ion. It would rather be positive. What that means in redox is that it's more likely to be oxidized. So more likely to lose an electron, more likely to be an ion, more likely to be oxidized in redox chemistry terms. So since lithium is more likely to be oxidized, it is more likely to be on this right-hand side. It would rather be an ion, lose an electron, than anything else. Likewise, when you look at the bottom of the chart, you see things like gold, platinum, mercury, silver, things that we often see as solids. So here you have things that are more likely to take the electrons. So they're more likely to hang out and be like, so lithium, I know you always wanted to be an ion. And I, gold, as long as it is an ion, I would happily take your electrons and turn myself into a solid. So we would say that the ions over here are more likely to be reduced. So more likely to be reduced. Now, the reason why I have this emphasis on where things are is realize that it's got to be an ion to take electrons from it. So it's always an exchange of electrons. So we can look at lithium or potassium solid giving up an ion to become positive, or we could look at silver taking an electron to become solid. So realize that this is always going to be an exchange of ions and there's nowhere on this table where you have metals becoming negative because the metals are only going to give up electrons or you have ions that can take electrons. Those are your two options. So let's actually look at some of these options and what they look like. So down here at the bottom, we have magnesium plus copper ions, and we want to know if anything's going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to find both of these on our table. So I'm looking for magnesium and copper. So as I look for this, so I should find magnesium. There's my magnesium. And I'm going to find copper. There we go, copper down here. So since I have found both of those, what we can see is magnesium is higher on the chart. So magnesium is more likely to be oxidized, more likely to give up electrons. Copper, more likely to take electrons. So from here, magnesium has electrons to give. Copper ion can take electrons since it's positive. It's got room to take electrons. And because of where they are on the table, they are likely to actually do that. So we would predict products for this. So we would predict that a reaction would occur. And so in this case, we are going to have that magnesium two plus plus copper solid. And so notice when I pulled these, I pulled these options off of the table. So I had magnesium solid and I took it to magnesium two plus. I had copper two plus. I took it to copper solid. Yes, there are more options for oxidation states in the world. But for this, we're only going to pull things off of the chart. So we could try one more. So we could look at iron 2 plus and 10 solid. So again, I want to find both of these on my chart. So I'm going to find my iron and there's my iron and I'm going to find my 10 and there's my 10. I'm using some sort of other dot system just so I know which ones I'm comparing to. Because if you always use arrows, you just have a lot of arrows. So right now I have iron 2 plus in my reaction. I have 10 solid. When I look on this chart, I can see iron is higher than 10. So iron is more likely to be oxidized because it's higher and 10 is more likely to be reduced. But what I have is already the most likely option. My iron has already given up electrons. My 10 already has as many electrons as it wants. So what's going to happen here is nothing. 
we are going to get no reaction from this because the states that they're already in, iron is being oxidized and being positive, tin is being neutral, being reduced already, is already their most likely state from the chart. So since iron is higher, it should be oxidized in a positive state. Since tin is lower, it should be reduced in a neutral state, and that's what we already have. So no reaction is going to happen because these guys are already exactly where they want to be. We will talk more about this in lecture. Um, so don't. So if this is too short of an explanation, we will do more of this and more examples in lecture. But hopefully, this gives you a little taste of what's going on.